here's where it gets really strange. The the I you know I talked about the negative freedoms essentially in the Constitution that the Constitution constrains the government. This is one of the areas where I think liberals and conservatives agree. But now we have conservatives in the United States taking these issues, and, and my guess is that they'll probably, it'll be interesting to see how they handle this wiretap issue. Because now the Obama administration is doing exactly, in fact, they're going even farther than the Bush administration did down this road that was being defended by conservatives right up until today. And my guess is that conservative talk radio won't even touch the topic. Or if they do, it'll be another thing to, to trash Obama about, which, frankly, I think might even be a good thing, oddly enough, because this is it's wrong. It's just plain old flat out wrong. The reason we have privacy protections in the Constitution in the, in the first, third, fourth and fifth amendments of the Constitution and the, and the reason why, why and free speech amendments and freedom of assembly amendments or, protections in the First Amendment is primarily political. And we know that Richard Nixon was wiretapping his political enemies. I believe George Bush was wiretapping his political enemies. Right-wingers right now might think Obama's wiretapping his political enemies because the wiretapping programs apparently are still going on. But now we've got the guys on the right taking a legitimate concern, frankly, about the overreaching power of federal government. But they see it in a very different way. You know, I'm talking about the overreaching power of the federal government in terms of their reaching into, into our conversations and into our associations, the right of privacy. Because the day has come in the past, I was there, when simply meeting with other people, subject you to government in, uh, surveillance and infiltration, and even, frankly, uh, you know, an attempt to stir up problems, provocation. Back in the 60s and 70s in the anti-war movement, SDS and all that kind of thing, I, you know, when the government was behaving in, in a way that wasn't quite Fujimori, well, Kent State, we, you know, our government killed four people, students. Fujimori was just sentenced to 25 years in prison for this. But the but the here this is Dick Morris, Fox News. He's he's he's, he's saying you know, their concern isn't the the stuff that I've been talking about. Their concern is the fact that uh, Barack Obama has has asked has said to the General Motors, okay, if you want some more of our money, you've got to you got to let go Rick Wagoner. After Bush essentially did the same thing with the head of AIG, but mm, they kind of forget that. But anyhow, here's here's. Uh, um, Dick Morris. Those crazies in Montana who say we're going to kill ATF agents because the UN's going to take over, well, they're beginning to have a case. They're beginning to have a case to kill ATF agents? Dick Morris advocating the murder? Well, it's not. he's not the first one. G. Gordon Liddy was advocating the murder of ATF agents. Remember, he said shoot for their head because they wear bulletproof vests. Was never held to account for that. Glenn Beck going off on how government is the heroin pusher, the terrible thing. And of course, the heroin is we're going to provide a baseline of support for people. Again, none of these guys are talking about constitutional issues. They're talking about about the the basically what they refer to as the nanny state, the welfare. The government state. is a heroin pusher, using smiley faced fascism to grow the nanny state. If you look at the logo on the website, it's really nice. Do we have it? It's a child surrounded by a parent, which is then all surrounded by this nice little eagle. And I saw the eagle, and I'm like, this is fantastic. I trust that eagle to come down swooping out of the sky and peck all of our eyes out. Mm, yeah, so this is the hate the government rant. And I'm not going there. I'm not going into the hate the government rant. I'm going into the we need to be sure that our government respects its limits uh, here's Savage on this. on about women now, the media and Michelle, why? Again, they're comparing her to Jackie. I don't think she's a Jackie, but that's the least of our problems. The bigger problem is that we have a naked Marxist for president here. Mm, a naked Marxist for president. So all of this then leads to this question, or leads to this larger issue, of Glenn Beck's rhetoric, and, and broadly speaking, I mean, this uh, Eric Bowler writing over at Media Matters. You can read this over at MediaMatters.org about how Richard Poplowski, 22-year-old guy, puts on a bulletproof vest, grabs his guns, grabs an AK-47, leaves behind what was intended to be the suicide note, 
talking about how he fears the gun, the Obama gun ban that's on its way and doesn't like our rights being infringed upon. Because essentially the only right, the only right, in quotes, that these guys are talking about is the right to have a gun. Glenn Beck again. The Frenchman I like is Wayne LaPierre. He's with us now from the uh, NRA, the National Rifle Association, because the Second Amendment is under fire. We're all seeing one of the greatest freedom movements in the world right now is women, men, people all over this country in one of the worst economies in our lifetime going out and buying firearms. They're saying, I will protect my family, I will protect my neighborhood, and I will stand up for my rights. And that's happening everywhere. So people are buying guns. Are they buying guns to stop AT&T from wiretapping them? No. They're buying, they're buying guns out of some sort of you know, craziness. I mean, this, 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 you know, Glenn Beck going into tears. Oh, it's Obama. He's a job. And, and the Freedom Watch, they had, uh, they had Alex Jones on. He's got this, this CD called the Obama Deception. He's uh, planned to bring in total police state control and gun confiscation. And so this guy calls in a domestic disturbance to the police. The first two police officers who show up, he shoots them in the head. A third guy tries to tries to rescue his two fallen patriot, uh, compatriots. He shoots this guy. He kills three police officers. It's not unlike the case of Jim Adkinson down in Tennessee, July 28, 2008, at the Tennessee Valley Unitarian Universalist Church. He goes in and opens fire and kills a bunch of Unitarians. Why? Because they're liberals. He went after the liberals. When they searched his home, they found copies of Savage's Liberalism is a Mental Disorder, Sean Hannity's Let Freedom Ring, Bill O'Reilly's The O'Reilly Factor, and a four-page manifesto. Why did he go in and murder these people in the Unitarian Church? Well, from his own manifesto. This is what Jim Adkinson wrote, quote, The only way we can rid ourselves of this evil is kill them in the streets. Kill them where they gather. I'd like to encourage other like-minded people to do what I've done. If life ain't worth living anymore, don't just kill yourself. Do for you, something for your country before you go. Go kill liberals. And he did. So here, you know, this is, I, I find this a very, very, very difficult issue. Because on the one hand, we've got the Obama administration contravening our rights to privacy in a way that I consider to be illegal and in violation of our Constitution. And on the other hand, you've got right-wing crazies out there saying the government is taking too much power. Now, what they're talking about is things like Social Security and national health care and, oh my God, we, we, might, we might be bailing out General Motors. I mean, they, it's, it's directed in all the wrong places, right? It's directed to, to, to whip up fear and to support the corporatists in this country. And that right-wing fear-mongering is leading to people killing people in the United States when, in fact, we should, what, we should if we're going to rise up, if there's going to be a political movement, if there's going to be a new Tea Party, which Newt and his buddies are organizing, I'm telling you, it's the next big thing that's going to sweep the nation. They have been planning this thing ever since they planted that guy on CNBC, Rick, what's his name, Santinelli or whatever, to say, ah, oh, we need a new Tea Party, you know, because these bums are getting bailed out of their homes. We need to bail out the bankers instead, right? The corporatists, the pseudo-fascists promoting this thing are driving people to kill other Americans for what? To stop what they think is socialism? And at the same time, very real rights, our rights to privacy, are being contravened not just by the Bush administration, but now by the Obama administration? I encourage you to contact the Obama administration and say, hey, wait a minute. This, the the so-called Patriot Act, the, the uh, FISA bill that, that Obama went back and voted for while he was in Congress, when he was running for president, these are wrong. Political freedom, political speech, the right to assembly, the right to, 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 to privacy is important if you're going to have a functioning democracy.